Hi, in this video I'm going to solve a couple of vectors problems. They all concern an aeroplane that's coming into land and it needs to make sure it's got the right velocity vector to successfully land on the runway. In the first part of the problem we have a crosswind. So the context of the problem we need a to achieve a landing velocity of 50, uh, sorry, 62 meters per second along the runway. Uh, so we've got to determine the magnitude and direction of the velocity that the aircraft is going to need to have in order to give you 62 meters per second when it has a crosswind velocity of 15 meters per second. So that's the first part of the problem. In the second part of the problem, we have a combined headwind and crosswind of magnitude 15 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees from the landing direction. So that's the problem stated. Let's get stuck into the first part where we are solving for just a simple crosswind velocity of 15 meters per second. So what we, what we want to start off with is actually the, the final result that we want to achieve, which is the velocity vector of 62 meters per second along the runway. So let's assume our runway is vertical in my diagram. So that means our resultant velocity vector needs to add up to 62 meters per second vertically downwards, okay? Now we have a crosswind, and there's no angle given to the crosswind, so we'll assume that it's perpendicular to the direction of the runway, the desired direction of travel. So I'm going to draw that in here, like this. So this is 15 meters per second to the right in this case. Okay, it doesn't really matter which way you choose, left or right. Now you notice I've drawn that head to head with the resultant vector. That's important to remember, this is the resultant vector that we want to achieve, so I'm not trying to add this to this one. What I'm trying to do is determine the, the velocity vector of the aeroplane that I need to add to this crosswind to give me 62. So that's the reason for me doing that. So therefore, the velocity vector that the aeroplane needs is going to start at the origin of the 62 meter per second resultant velocity and end so that it's head to tail with the 15 meter per second one. So let's draw this in blue. This is the V that I'm interested in, this here. Now I need to determine the magnitude and direction. So I need to work out how big this is. It's the hypotenuse of the triangle, so that'll be a Pythagoras problem. And then we're gonna use trigonometry to work out the angle. So let's get stuck into that. I'm just gonna write down here, this is theta here, this angle here. All right, so Pythagoras first. So V is going to be equal to square root of 15 squared plus 62 squared. Okay, so put that in. And we're gonna get 15 squared plus 62 squared. That gives us 63.79 meters per second so that we can, uh, Round that to 64, can't we? 64 meters per second to 2SF. Okay, and then the angle. Um, I'm just going to use tan, the tan relationship. Tan theta is going to be opposite over adjacent, the ratio there. Since those two numbers were given to me, it's probably better than using one that I've calculated. But of course, you can do that. You can use the sine relationship or cosine, since you know the hypotenuse now. But like I said, I'm going to use the tan relationship. So this is inverse tan of opposite over adjacent, so 15 over 62. Okay, so let's put that into my calculator. 15 over 62. And that gives me an angle of 13.60 degrees, so we can round that to 14, 14 degrees. And that's the first problem. So what was interesting about that was that we actually started off with the resultant, and that's the thing that probably would trip up most students, realizing that we're starting with the resultant and we need to work out which velocity vector to add to the crosswind. We're now gonna use pretty much the same principle in solving the second problem, though it's a little more complex because we have to interpret the headwind as well. So let's have a look at that. Now we have a headwind and crosswind which give us a combined total wind velocity of 15 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees from the landing direction. So the, the landing conditions haven't changed. We still need to achieve that 62 meters per second, but it's just this vector here 
the 15 meter per second one is at a different angle. Let's have a look at what that would look like. So I'm gonna draw my 62 here, draw it a little larger this time so that uh, I've got a bit more room to deal with. Okay, now we need to draw the crosswind on. So I'll do that in red again. So it's coming at an angle of 30 degrees. So this is the line of action and it's a headwind, right? So the headwind means it's opposing the motion. It's going, coming towards us. So if it's coming towards us from an angle of 30 degrees, we can draw it like that, okay? So, so I just continue this with a dotted line and then fifth, uh, that's a bit of a bit large angle actually, my apologies. Get there. So this is 30 degrees and uh, 15 meters per second. I'll just draw that there. In fact, I'll just move the 30 to the side here and the 15 can go outside my triangle. There we go. So this is the size this is the angle there, 30 degrees. Okay, so now we do the same thing as last time. We need a velocity vector starting at the origin of the 62 meter per second vector and going to join head to tail with the 15 meter per second one. This is a bit of a longer one. It's a bit curved, but hey, that's okay. We know it uh, should be straight between those. So that's our triangle there. And you'll notice this is not a right angle triangle. So, tools that are available to us to solve this problem. Well, we know this angle here, 30, and we know this is a straight line. So this angle here is 150. Let's write that in there. That's a known angle, 150 degrees. The angle we want to know is here. So we're gonna write that as theta. And we of, of course want to know the size of the velocity vector. Since we don't have a right angle triangle, but we do know one angle, which is opposite the desired side, and we know two sides, we can use the cosine rule. Cosine rule will give us V, and then we can use the sine rule to determine the unknown angle theta. So that's the method that I'm going to use. There is an alternative method, which is you can take this vector here, you can split it down into two components, a horizontal and a vertical. Since you know that angle and this size, that's possible you're going to then have a vector going to the right here and one here. And you can use both of those values to turn this into a right angle triangle problem. 62 plus the vertical component of this gives you the full length of that side and then whatever the horizontal component is. That's an alternative, a little bit more work, not much, but a little bit more. Anyway, I'm gonna use cosine rule because we've already done the right angle triangle. So let's have a look at this. Cosine rule tells us that b squared equals, so a squared equals b squared plus c squared, so that's the two sides, 15 squared plus 62 squared, minus two times the sides, 15 times 62, times cos of the opposite angle, which we know, 150. Okay, so hopefully we've got that all in there, yeah, just about. I'm just going to drag that a little bit to the right, so we can see that a little bit better. Okay, so let's uh, put this into my calculator and don't forget to square root all of that. So all this bit here, in fact, I can just simply copy that and stick that all in there, there you go. So uh, yeah, when you do this, if you do it in two steps, don't forget to do the square root at the end. Okay, so I'm gonna do that all in one go, 15 squared plus 62 squared minus two times 15 times 62 times cos of 150. And that gives me, oops, switch back to pen, equals 75.36 meters per second. So 75 to two SF. Okay, that's our velocity solved using the cosine rule. Now I'm gonna show you how to use the sine rule to determine the unknown angle. So, Sine rule is a ratio of sine of an angle to its opposite side is equal to the sine of another angle to over its opposite, opposite side. Okay, so we want to know theta. So sine theta divided by 15 over 15 is gonna be equal to the sine of an angle divided by its side. In our triangle, we only know this angle, so we're gonna do sine 150 divided by the velocity 
that we just determined that I'm going to use the 4SF value here. In fact, I can use, I've still got it in my calculator, so I can just use the full value that I calculated. So that would be sine 150 over 75.36. Okay, rearrange that for the unknown theta. Theta is inverse sine of sine 150 over 75.36 times 15. Okay, and now do that calculation. So times sine of fifteen times fifteen, and then don't forget to inverse sine that answer, and that gives me. Hopefully, I did that right. Five point seven one one degrees. Uh, so to two SF, that's five point seven degrees. And there you have it, that's the angle. If you were to split this up into horizontal and vertical components, like I said, the crosswind and headwind combination to work out the actual crosswind, the actual headwind. If you work that out using the right angle triangle method, you should get exactly the same answers.